And so we see it's a three-step process, like Caesar's three steps, vini, vidi, vici, I came, I saw, I conquered. Muhammad's three steps was immigrate, increase, eliminate. Immigrate into the host country as a religious refugee. Increase the number of your followers amongst the disadvantaged minorities and then demand political accommodation. And then eliminate the previous culture neighborhood by neighborhood until you take over. So I was speaking in Detroit, Michigan, afterwards visiting with people around my book table, and they were telling me about a lady who had a ministry to pregnant moms. She shows up at a Muslim house with a little present. While she's there, out of a bedroom comes another pregnant Muslim mom. Out of a bedroom comes another pregnant Muslim mom. Out of a bedroom comes another pregnant Muslim mom, all pregnant by the same man. He's practicing Sharia law polygamy in his house in Dearborn, Michigan. Then someone says, oh, Fazl bought a bunch of houses on the block, put a wife in each one. They go down to the welfare office and say the husband's not around, and they get these checks. He visits the wives, and the more children they have, the larger the checks get. He's living like a king at state expense, and all the kids playing in the middle of the street are his kids. He's practicing Sharia law polygamy on his block in Dearborn, Michigan. Then they take over several more blocks and they vote in the school board. And now they have the girls wearing the burqa and they have the Sharia in the schools and the gymnasiums for their prayer with the boys at the front, the women behind, the girls behind, and then the girls having their period behind them. Muhammad said, if a dog, a donkey, or a woman passes between you and Mecca when you're praying, your prayers are invalidated. So the women have to be in the very back. And so then they take over several more blocks and they vote in the fire department, the police department. And like in Hamtramck, Michigan, they just voted in a majority Muslim city council. And all they have their minarets and their loudspeakers on calls to prayer five times a day. And all the former Polish inhabitants of the neighborhood are driven out. And so we see it's this three-step process. They come in as immigrants, and then they increase, and they begin to uh, demand political accommodation, and then they eliminate the previous culture. And so there's a 1,400-year track record to observe this. There's really no mystery as to what's happening. And we break it down into three springs. The first is an Arab-Persian spring from 622 to 1071. Second is a Turkish spring from 1071 to 1923. And the third Arab spring started in 1928. Past behavior is the best indicator of future performance. We have 1,400 years of past behavior. They would do something called psychological projection or blame shifting. This is where the attacker blames the victim. Bullies on a playground do this. They push all the other kids around, and then one kid finally has enough, swings back, and the bully beats him up and says, you started it. Teacher, he started it. Wife beaters do this. The big burly husband beats the tar out of the wife. Well, you provoked me. It's your fault. Aggressor nations do this, right? This will invade some country over some little bitty thing. Well, you provoked us. We're going to go in and invade your country. And so the Muslims would come into a tolerant host community and then accuse that host community of being tolerant of them. It's like, wait a second, you wouldn't be here if we weren't tolerant. But they accuse the other side of what they're guilty of. And then they whip their followers into a frenzy and drive the previous culture out.